a relationship there is a very strong uh, relationship between poverty uh, and visual impairment or blindness because um, because i am uh, visually impaired uh, i read there is a productivity loss uh, and therefore my you know expenses or my consumption is less and therefore i am poor and because i am poor i don't go and you know access services uh so this this vicious cycle continues so there is a you know like any other developmental uh, issues there is a very very strong relationship between visual impairment disability uh, and poverty good afternoon everyone we are really excited to have with us today mr rn mohanty He has spent more than three decades in the social sector with assignments involving programs, finance, and enabling fundraising for various social and economic causes. Arun, as he is fondly addressed by his peers, has held leadership positions at various development sector organizations. A key strategist, Arun is a realist in spearheading new initiatives. He is currently the CEO at Sight Savers India and is responsible for overseeing all facets of development work within the organization. Mr. Arun Mohanty was conferred with the PNB Foundation's fourth Showcase Odisha Award for his illustrious service in the development sector in 2019. Dear sir, we are really happy to have you with us. We are really looking forward to the insightful discussion today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. to begin with the interview sir uh, my first question is uh, you know what are some of the key programs undertaken by sight savers okay as you know sight savers um, uh, has been in india for quite some time now more more than 50 years and our primary focus is uh, working on avoidable blindness so we we intend to eliminate avoidable blindness uh, from the country we also work in the space of disability to ensure that people uh living with disabilities uh, uh are equal in the society and then we we promote that as well so we have uh both uh, a eye health cause and a disability cause uh that we work for in india that's amazing sir that's amazing uh now why are eye care initiatives important in the csr space and how has covid 19 impacted the need for such initiatives okay i mean one of one of the uh, issues as you know uh, for when the work that we do which is within the eye health piece uh, our primary aim is to reduce the prevalence of avoidable blindness so sight savers works in eight states 100 rural districts uh, and we we primarily work with our partners so suddenly with the the covid thing everything went away and you know one you know in terms of supply the the supply was closed in terms of hospitals were closed and things like that and secondly people also were scared to come out and you know check their eyes and get the treatments done and things like that. so uh, you know both both ways uh, the covid kind of impacted it largely last two years i mean for example uh, we we have our yearly kind of uh, benchmark target saying that we will achieve this in these 100 so those those were uh, affected so that you know coming back to the csr space so that makes it a bit more important now for for the csr activities to focus a bit more on eye health uh, um, primarily because of the backlogs primarily because of the effect that covid 19 had uh, on eye care initiatives uh, particularly in rural areas many of the covid uh, you know the eye care hospitals were converted to covid hospitals so no no kind of work done in terms of eye care uh, no surgeries as you know uh, cataract and refractive error are the two primary causes for blindness avoidable blindness. and those two things were deeply impacted uh, 2020 and 2021 as well so that's how it's even becomes now more important uh, this year for the csr space to focus more on eye uh, i mean in in that sense for all developmental work but eye health is something which was badly hit uh, because it, it requires hospitals to do the surgeries and those were kind of stopped so so that's my view on this 
in a way covid also digitalized everything but also created certain problems for people in terms of i care solutions and you know a uh, regular uh, routine that one should be following in you know preserving their i care health so all that was also impacted during the covid 19 mm-hmm. uh, you've been in the sector for a very long time we would like to understand from you what are the major socio economic implications of i care problems for the marginalized communities and if there's any link between visual impairment and the poverty cycle okay i mean um, um poverty and marginalization um about the cause and effect uh, of uh, visual impairment so intergenerational poverty has been perpetuated um, because of blindness because of uh, you know disability and things like so if if uh, in terms of uh, uh, relationship there is a very strong uh, relationship between poverty uh, and visual impairment or blindness because um, because i am uh, visually impaired uh, i read there is a productivity loss uh, and therefore my you know expenses or my consumption is less and therefore i am poor and because i am poor i don't go and you know access services uh so this this vicious cycle continues so there is a you know like any other developmental uh, issues there is a very very strong relationship between visual impairment disability uh, and poverty so we have seen um, in many of our districts that we work uh, that it's been generational uh, the poverty it, it just passes on uh, because uh, uh, because of visual impairment uh, and you know there is a a direct productivity loss or as a direct uh, household level income loss uh, because of this and that is one of the reasons we are focusing on uh, primarily if you look at site service india's districts that uh, that we have chosen to work in are all kind of uh, you know poor and marginalized districts where we get uh, the communities these kind of communities who are affected heavily by visual impact that's the focus thank you so much for sharing that sir the what you said clearly illustrates how it's very important to focus on i care solutions to be uh, you know an i care preventive i care in fact to be able to really help india you know progress both economically as well as socially uh, moving on to our next question how can the csr fraternity bring in the element of sustainability in their i care initiatives okay i mean um, uh, this this is a very interesting question uh, first of all uh, you know focusing on i health uh, csr fraternity which is focusing on health must understand this is an important part of that and directly contributes to productivity loss and you know they are forced the second one i would say very strongly is to you know focus on longer term projects on i it's not about doing a few camps uh, here and there and doing a few surgeries it's about you know seeing this as a social economic issue uh, it's not about doing a few camps it's about saying that if this is the district if these are people uh, i mean you know there are huge backlogs for cataract uh, which actually is one of the reasons why people go blind and regular interests so therefore focusing this uh, as a cause uh, not as something which which is temporary in nature and therefore you know do a few camps and you know get out of it it's not about it. so funding longer term programs and you know figuring out that okay you know this is an issue which is part of the larger global health uh, and therefore we must focus and fund it and and the uh, uh, the next one is more about understanding that this has suffered a lot during covid which we spoke about in your earlier question uh uh and the final one is you know supporting uh, people like us who are working very closely with them uh we have realized over the years that uh you know the government has the largest platform in terms of i health in terms of providing services so rather than creating parallel uh, services how can we support uh, the government services or strengthen systems which will take care of i health initiatives in the rural pockets uh, funding those kind of initiatives also will be a big help from the csr fraternity and that is what will probably strengthen the piece of sustainability which you spoke about uh, so these are a few things that i think 
the CSR fraternity should focus on. So very well said. Um, so one thing that you mentioned is, of course, that the program should not just, you know, be about uh, conducting preventive, uh, you know, IK camps or, uh, you know, they should be longer projects focusing yes. on providing sustainable solutions. And the second point you mentioned is the convergence with government schemes. Yes. Uh, with regards to the first one, uh, I would request you to help us understand a little bit more about what element should be added to these long-term projects to bring in that sustainability aspect? Okay, one of the issues that um, we've been struggling with is um, eye health is somehow not seen as a big issue, first of all. Uh, and that is probably one of the reasons why it is not properly integrated into primary health care. So one of the things, if you want to institutionalize it, make it sustainable, we must make sure that it is integrated into primary. So the, the ASHA, the NM uh, workers uh, will talk about this. Um, uh, village level, this is discussed, that this is an issue. People should tell them that if you have a cataract, you must go and see. It. So we are opening up a lot of uh, vision centers in rural centers which is primarily to take the services to the people rather than asking the people to come to the services. So we are opening up uh, vision centers at rural level, and we are making sure that, you know, ASHAs and uh, others, uh, primary healthcare workers are trained on some of the basic eye care screenings and therefore recommending them or, you know, kind of referring them to vision centers or to hospitals. System. So, all of these initiatives may not see um, quite immediate results, tangible results that the CSR fraternity sometimes looks. Uh, so they said, uh, so therefore I am saying that, okay, uh, doing X number of camps and doing uh, thousand surgeries is quick and it is busy. But, you know, spending some energy and efforts into making sure that once things are settled in terms of backlogs and all, how will the system take care of it, takes care of itself in the process? For that, you need to be patient and invest uh, on those activities which we primarily propose to CSR fraternity. So that is what I meant by saying that uh, integration with primary health, integration with larger health is important rather than seeing this as a camp and surgery in itself. Very well said, sir. Those are some really, really valuable points. And I'm sure people will be watching this. They will really benefit from this. Game. Our next question is, uh, do you think there's any alignment between SDGs and the eye care initiatives undertaken? If yes, which SDGs are related to the eye care initiatives? And how do these initiatives impact the SDGs? Okay, so we, uh, I mean, recently uh, we've been... Um seeing papers uh, on eye health, which says all is I mean, we can go from one to 17 and, you know, connect. But largely, if you look at it, one of the things that we are talking about is, uh, you know, uh, poverty, global health, number three, uh, education, uh, gender inequalities, uh, reducing uh, inequities. Uh, like I told you, in 100 uh, districts, we have more than you know, 65, 70 partners. So goal 17, which is partnership. Uh, we have realized that we can't do it alone. Uh, so all of this and, and all our eye health and disability work, one of the principles we very closely and strongly believe in and follow is leave no one behind. So all of this, I don't have to go into details and tell you how SDs are linked, but everything that we do. And we are also now talking about localizing SDs. Uh, how do we ensure that everyone, including people in the panchayat, understands how they are contributing to SDGs? So well, there are, you know, programs within Site Service India which talks about localizing SDGs at the, you know, uh, you know, level which is below blocks, at the village level. So we are working on a project which talks about, uh, you know, talking about SDGs and how can we contribute to SDGs by working on these few initiatives on I on this on inclusive education. Uh, those kind of things. So largely, if you, we have a trucker a truckers program. We screen all truckers across the Golden Quadrilateral and the North, South, and East, West corridors. So we, you know, probably in the last three three years, we have screened more than four hundred thousand truckers and given them spectacles. 
products. And we found, uh, you know, uh, close to 47% of the truck drivers have issues with their eyes. And, you know, that directly links to, you know, 3.6 uh, in the STGs, talking about road safety, right? So take out any initiative and look at the SDG list, try to link, you link with everything. Uh, but lastly, what I said is something, you know, these are some of the ones that we are very closely linked. And we must, you know, realize this, internalize it, and, you know, make sure that everything we do actually is contributing. That's what we are trying to do with Insight Science. You know. Yes, I think that's very right, sir. Uh, one thing that you mentioned about localizing the SDGs, I think that's the way forward in achieving the, you know, Agenda 2030. There's increasing focus on, you know, the bottoms up approach where, uh, you know, community takes the initiatives to drive the, you know, development agenda that we have in place. So um, that's there. Uh, now, next question is very um, interesting one. We would love to hear from you a message for the youth of the country who are constantly glued to their screen all the time. Oh, yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I am not an ophthalmologist to tell you uh, any clinical advice, but, you know, one, you know, general and social advice that I have is that I do not forget the reason uh, because of which you are looking at the screen. That's your eyes. So take care of that. Uh, give it regular breaks. I mean, we have seen, you know, increasingly evidences are coming up nowadays because of COVID that, you know, the eye health issues, eye problems uh, are increasing because of screen times. Um, in, in urban setup, it is more than rural setup. So all these smaller, bigger evidences are actually speaking to these issues. And therefore, we must ensure from a regular point of view that, you know, this, these are the, you know, things, eyes are the reasons that you can see the screen, you can, you know, watch YouTube for many, many hours because of your eyes. And please don't neglect that. That's, that's the message I have. Thank you so much, sir. I think that's the most important one. The world is a beautiful place and one needs their eyes to see the world. So um, that's that's there for sure. Uh, but this was wonderful, sir. It was really good to have you with us. And uh, we wish you all the very best for all the good work that you're doing. And uh, uh, we hope that you'll continue to succeed in your efforts. Thank you, Esther. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bye -bye. sir. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you.